going through a divorce is a tough experience. I wouldn't wish that to my, my worst enemy. It is hard with yourself. It is hard with your kids. It is hard with the family members. There are so many downsides and it's very hard to go through. I am the younger of six kids. I was born to a family, a big family, middle-class family in Brazil. And um, it, it's quite surprising that my family of my five siblings, six with me, um, all of them got divorced. And it was in this upbringing that I find myself or found myself at some point growing up and experiencing the, the changes in relationship and how people come and go at some point. Uh, it's very ironic, but my family, my mom and my dad, they were in a very toxic relationship. Uh, my dad had many addictions. He was addicted to drugs, alcohol. He was a very uh, unstable person. He couldn't hold a job. And my mom was uh, always relying on him to provide for the family. So it was a hard uh, relationship. Though they were still together, but in a sense, it would be better if they, they were divorced. Uh, different from my, my siblings, because I saw so much energy, so much love and, and so many promises. And at the same time, they were going uh, different ways with their spouses. So it was an irony of relationship. And I promised myself growing up, it doesn't matter how much it, it takes from me, but I, I don't want to go into the same path. I will, I will do better. I will not do the same as my, my brothers or as my dad and my mom. And even my grandma, my grandpa, which were lovely people, I love them dearly. But still, they had so many issues in their relationship that I, I can say I didn't have any role like if I would look for a couple to know, take as a whole couple, uh, someone I could mirror, I couldn't find anybody in my family. Children learn to do life by watching their parents. And so when we exhibit healthy relationships, we instruct our children. When we live healthy spirituality, we instruct our children. And when we have a healthy re uh, process of grieving, we instruct our children. It was like a, a very unexpected event when we met and uh, eventually started dating and it was exciting, it was very uh, very nice to get to know somebody with the same goals and the same views and she was also coming from a, a family with many challenges. So I've always heard of people who have been to hardships and they try to rescue someone else who has been to perhaps the same circumstances. So uh, at that point I did not realize that, but I was, I was kind of coming rescue of her, trying to help in some ways and trying to make it work because she would, in my view, she would completely understand where I was coming from because she also uh, went through so many different situations and hardships as, as a kid growing up. And in my view, in my uh, mind, I, I just saw she's gonna understand me better than anybody else. So we decided to get married. It was a big step for us. And we were sure that we would make it work. She was happy, I was happy. We had big plans. And um, a little while after our wedding, we had our first kid. And it was like a big moment for us, a big realization. To me, it was like a big, big dream to be a dad. And you know, uh, everything I wanted from my dad, I kind of was now 
looking at my son and promising myself I would be there for him. Even though we were together, living in the same house, sharing responsibilities, co-parenting, uh, our relationship wasn't great. In many ways we could feel always the tension was there, there was always like this expectations unmet, and at some point uh, they would come up and we would work them a little bit, and uh, at some point we would, you know, weigh things and see, oh, we have to be there for our kid, so let's put our expectations down and just be there for them. Uh, let's work on it later on. Let's wait and let's see how things develop. But it doesn't work that way. We know how to, um, to do the fight, the flight, or to freeze. And is this time to run? Is this time to, uh, to separate? Sometimes people will, I'm gonna leave you before you leave me. Okay, so uh, we, we do this, I, 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 I'm going to take care of myself because I don't want to be hurt by you. And, uh, and if I have, my parents did that, this is what I know to do, and that's really not always the way to go. It is important for someone to come alongside us again to help us to process. Is this the time to separate? There are times when a person may be toxic or you know, domestic violence is involved, that kind of thing. The, the trauma can happen in two ways. One way is I learned from my parents, they got divorced, I don't want to go through that, right? And they can, uh, that, that can be a little damaging because if they're going through an actual traumatic, abusive marriage, but then they commit it, I'm not going to get divorced, I'm not going to fix my marriage because uh, there's no divorce in my family because I learned the lesson. Well, that's not very balanced. You need to work on that. And the other extreme is, well, marriages are disposable, you know, because that's what I learned. So if I don't like my spouse, I'll just get a new one. You know, and we do live in this kind of disposable mindset where, you know, if you have, if you have a, a shoe and you don't like your shoes anymore, they're dirty, you just throw it away and get a new one. You know, so marriage can have that, that same mindset where it's not working, well, I'll just throw it away and I'll get a new one. But that doesn't work with marriage because it really affects your mind. It is worth to try, it is worth to fight, it is worth to do every, everything you can to save a relationship. And if it's still, um, there are two people willing to make it work and willing to take it to God and, and partner in, in this dream of having a family together and growing a kid together, I think there is hope, there is a chance that things may work. It is such a loss to go through a divorce. And then, you know, when everything gets said and done and you're standing in the rubble, you're trying to figure out, like, how do you even rebuild your life? It's a uh, mix of feelings. It is hard with yourself. It is hard with your kids. It is hard with the family members. There are so many downsides. A divorce is a death. It's a death of a dream, a death of uh, a relationship, both parties experience loss and it is imperative and I don't even care how toxic the individuals may be to each other it's still a loss it's still a death so to speak there are many many hard feelings as you go through a divorce I can say you can find yourself without an identity one of the struggles I've had the most was to figured out who was, I, who was I after leaving the house I used to live with my, my ex-wife, with my kids, trying to figure it out, feeling like a husband. I was not feeling like a dad necessarily because I, even though I loved my kids, I, was, I couldn't be there for them. It's like somebody took their snow globe of life and shook it up. And once the divorce is finalized, you put it down, but now if it's a kid, you got two snow globes, you got mom's house, dad's house, you know, and if it's just you, you got your own house of a snow globe. 
to deal with and somebody's just now shaking it, settled it, and you gotta figure out what we call the new normal. What is your new normal? And it's almost like relearning to live life all over again. It's terrible, you just feel, you lose yourself in this process and you have to relearn to live. I would say in some ways you die and you have to reborn. In some ways you have to kill all those expectations and dreams you enter this relationship with and you have to make new dreams, you have to create new dreams. But at some, at some point you just feel yourself like em empty of all those beautiful thoughts and dreams that you created and now having to, you know, you see your castle crumbling and you have to figure it out how to put it back together. And so it is imperative that you acknowledge this, that you acknowledge that I am hurting, to actually stay with your feelings, don't tuck them away, own your feelings, go through a grief process, understand that it doesn't get any better, time does not heal, you really do need to go through a grieving process. That's the very first thing I would say to anybody. And when we have a healthy rec uh, process of grieving, we instruct our children. It's important that they see you sad and that they see you crying and they see you telling the stories and tearing up. And so when children watch parents deal with grief in a positive fashion, they have a model to follow now and they can in, in, in incorporate that into their own grief experience, and that would be healing for them. I was dealing with all this pain and pressure, and they hugged me and they said that, we are going, we are going to be all right. We are going to be all right. And I had to trust that. That was one of the hardest moments I had to go through and had to believe in the process. It's not easy, not easy at all. Step one in healing from a divorce is grieve what you lost. Because a lot of times people don't understand it is a grief process. So go through the grief process. A failed relationship can teach us a big, big thing. Um, we have to take all these little lessons that we can get, we can draw from this failed relationship so we can build a new, a stronger, and more mature relationship. But the temptation is there. I think if you uh, don't intentionally try to engage with the questions and the traumas and the many things you brought, like uh, myself, I brought so many things from my, my upbringing and the failed relationships in my family that it's just easy to assume, okay, this is, this is what happens, and I will start a new relationship, and if it doesn't work, I'll divorce again. And then step number two is look internal and ask yourself, what part did I contribute? Because if you don't fix yourself, if you don't fix your woundedness, if you don't heal from the things that are broken inside you, the chances of you finding and marrying somebody else very similar, just a different face, is going to be extremely high and this is one reason why second and third divorce rates are even higher than first-time marriages. We had to work a lot. I had a big list of questions. Uh, you can, you, whatever you can picture, we had it on paper, we had a question about that and um, we worked every one of those questions so we can, uh, so we could be safe to each other, we could help each other, we could understand we're, we were in the same boat, we were headed to the same direction, we wanted to be together for life. So it is, it is not an impulsive work, it's not something you should do just throwing yourself. I think it takes a lot of consideration, it takes a lot of hard work to get into a safe relationship. I don't think there is a better time for you to find God as, as you go through a crisis, a big crisis in life, and you find yourself without anybody that can answer your questions. And then you turn to God and, and you just have to bring the questions you have, lay under His feet and ask Him to, to work with you. And this is what I did. I, I 
really came to God and I said, God, this is, this is the mess of my life. As you go through the process, you always feel like an explainable sense of care and comfort. You have to wonder, where is this coming from? So though it hurt, though the, the circumstances are so difficult and, and challenging, I still can feel like there is some purpose behind that. There is some meaning behind that, that God has worked with me and God's going to be with me. Thank you.